Welcome back, everyone. In our last tutorial on a Flexbox image gallery, we would created a section. We gave it a class of gallery. In a moment, I'll show you why we did that. And then we had a series of nine different figures. Each one looks like this. You have a figure, you have an image, you have a fig caption with the caption inside. Okay, we left it pretty bare bones. On the image, we used Lorem Flickr. We grabbed the code from there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to start styling this. We're going to add some styles, and we're going to add Flexbox. Now, before I do, let me just show you. If you just Google Flexbox, the first hit will take you to the best place to get information on Flexbox. This is what we're going to be following, a complete guide to Flexbox. Okay? And so what we're going to focus on is two different things. For Flexbox to work, you need a container, a parent, and you need a list of items. This could be any number of tags. Because it says container, it expects you to use a block level tag and inside of the block, either more block level tags or possibly inline tags. The way we're going to do it is you'll note the container in our case is the section. Our items are all of these figure tags that have images inside. The output right now looks like this. Okay. We've got nine different images, each one slightly different, okay? And so what we're going to do is start adding a uh, flex box to this. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get your code pen open, and you're going to want to get the CSS code over here. Now, I added a font family to my body, so I'd give it some style so it looked nice. And now what we're going to do is we're going to target the section with a class of gallery. Now, I'm not going to overqualify this. I'm just going to put dot gallery. Now, if I knew for sure I would only use a section for the image gallery, I could also replace this dot gallery with just section. And if I'm going to have multiple sections of different classes, um, then I may or may not want to add section in front of the dot. For now, I think this is all I need to do. The first thing we're, we're what we're going to do is we're going to change the display of the gallery. Display flex. Look at what happened. The moment I did display flex, we got our flex box working. But we have a little bit of a problem. The problem is right now these images are lining up side by side. They're block level images before they didn't, but now they do. But here's the problem. They scroll horizontally. And can I tell you, you do not want to have a horizontal scroll bar. That is a big no-no if you ask me. The last thing a person wants to do is scroll from left to right, unless it's a video game or something like that, and that's part of the game action or whatever. But in this case, on a browser, people don't want to do that. Okay, So we do have a little bit of a problem. But notice, this is the container, the section, Notice by just changing the display to flex, it already now is a flex box, okay? And the flex is for flexible. So let's see some of the things we can do with it. We're going to play around with the layout first. Then I'll add a little section either on this video or on another one of adding some individual CSS3 uh, styles like rounded corners, borders around things, and other kinds of things. And then if I'm feeling good and I'm ready, we might even do a little JavaScript, uh, which would entail some extra coding. Okay, so let's take a look at the properties for the parent in the Flexbox. This is our gallery. All right, first thing you'll notice is there's a thing called Flex Direction. And one of the things you notice is the first element stayed in its spot and the rest started lining up side by side. So Flex Direction by default is from left to right. Okay, so if we set flex direction to row, it will become one row. If we do row reverse, it will actually reverse the order in which they appear. So let's go ahead and do that just so you can see it. Okay, this is part of the parent as well. Notice there is the table with the foot, the feet on the table and dog feet hanging off there. So we're going to just do uh, flex direction row, reverse, suddenly now that picture is on the right hand side and everything's scrolling off to the left. There is no horizontal scroll bar, but you can see it sticking off the side. That's a problem. 
But notice row reverse. We can also do column. This ensures that they display from top to bottom. And of course, you could do column dash reverse. And now it's you have to actually scroll up. Okay, so now the last item is at the top and the first item is at the bottom. That's column reverse. That's column. Where well, we just reverse the order, you see that? And then of course what we did is row, which is actually already its default behavior. Okay, so you don't even have to do that if it's going to have a flex direction of row. There's your graphic to show the flex direction. You got all your settings here and descriptions on here for what you did. Next, our problem is we need our items not to have a or a horizontal scroll bar, so we need to do a thing called flex wrap. And all we have to do is set flex wrap to wrap or wrap reverse. So let's take a look at those two. It's flex wrap. Notice a lot of these begin with the word flex. So we do flex wrap of wrap. And now suddenly we no longer have that horizontal scroll bar. But immediately we have a problem with this figure over here. Okay? Okay. So the other thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to change this figure because this caption is too wide. I highly recommend you do things like it. You've got to add a caption. You've got to make it longer than the image because if you don't, you're going to forget and you may end up having problems later on. It's better to fix them when they happen, right? So immediately I realize I have a problem with my figure. So I'm just going to go ahead and fix that right now. So I'm going to write figure. Now, I got a couple options here. I can just do any figure, or I could do a figure inside of a gallery, and that's what I want to do. I want to do only a figure inside of the gallery, and I'm going to set a, a width here. And on my width, I'm going to make it as wide as the widest image, and they're all 320 pixels wide, so I'm just going to set it right here at 320 px. I'm going to match the width of my figure with the width of the image of all of my images. So if you gave a different number here, then you need to change that to match it here. Okay. And suddenly now, all of my images are going to fit the same way. And you see, and what I mean by that is when I have extra content on a caption, it doesn't spill off to the right, so it doesn't force it to be too big. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Watch what happens. If I zoom out enough, you can now see four uh, images per row. So keep that in mind. I'm going to do control. So this is a responsive way to do it. And really, we did it with just a, a display of flex, a flex direction of row, and a flex wrap of wrap. And remember, there's also wrap dash reverse. Let's see what that looks like. And now the first item, notice, remember, this was the actual, this dog over here on the right but it's now at the top. That was actually the last figure there was. Notice I was right. That's the last figure in my image gallery for reference. If I now say row reverse, now look at that. It appears over here, but all of the stuff is situated on the right-hand side. There's ways that we can fix that as well, but I just wanted to show you. I recommend you just do row and wrap and you don't reverse anything. Now let's take a look at what else we have on the flex box here. So I just want to show you this, it's kind of interesting. Let's look at justify content, because remember we did that uh, flex, uh, the row wrap reverse. So justify content is one way we can change that. Notice we have flex start, which puts everything on the left hand side. Flex end puts everything on the right. Center puts everything squashed together, and any remaining space just kind of like goes on the left and the right-hand side. Space between puts the first item on the far left, the last item on the far right, and whatever space you need. And by the way, this is a per row kind of thing. And space around sort of kind of splits the difference. Space evenly, like evenly divides up every spot in between. Okay. 
So it's best just to look at that, and then you can play around with these different values. Let me show you how I can reverse it and then compensate for that weird right-hand side thing with justify content. And already, you may think I'm going a little fast, and I kind of am. I'm doing it just to give you an overview of all the different stuff we do. So let's do a row reverse. And then, and then notice our stuff is on the right-hand side. And we're going to do flex end. Now, isn't that weird? So, so basically, if we reverse our row, you would think flex start would be how you want to justify it. But without it, row reverse, everything's aligned on the right-hand side. So if we want to push it to the left, then we just go ahead and do flex and because we've already reversed the direction. Okay, that's flex n. Flex start is the default value. Um, I think we did space around. Sort of evenly spaces it. This is good if your gallery is full width. Okay, at this point, you probably want it. Now, uh, the nice thing about it is let's zoom out until we got four on here. So as soon as I zoom out and we can fit four, you'll notice this one that's by itself is sort of centered. And we did that using a justify content of their space around. And we got all these other values like uh, flex end. Uh, we can center. And then notice it squeezes them in a little bit. Uh, I kind of like that. Because what this effectively does is give it an automatic left and right hand margin. Uh, let's do space between. Suddenly, the left hand side, the right hand side are off to the far right. There's still a gap there, and that has to do with the figure tag. Okay, so if we were to, for example, set a margin of zero. Now you'll see there's more room for more of these images in space between. See how that works. Because we've removed the margin on our figure. The figure had a margin. This is totally optional if you want to set the margin this way. You may want to give it a little bit of a margin. 0.5 EM is a common one you may see. That gives you a little bit of margin. So again, you've got all these different options here. That's under justify content. Okay, so that's justify content. Let's look at the remaining ones for the parent. That's about all I'll have time for. And of course, you can go just Google Flexbox. You can read all about it. Uh, align items. Now, this is something interesting. If you have captions under your image and they are of different lengths, let's take a look at what I mean by that. Um, let me, there. Okay, notice this caption is greater than these other captions. And you scroll down and that one is a bigger caption as well. Okay. With the, keep that in mind, okay? Um, once we have these different captions, and I want to focus on this row right here. Uh, we usually tend to read from left to right, top to bottom, so lining things up on the top is probably a good idea. But you might also notice there's a little extra space down here. It's kind of a pain that you may want to deal with. So if you want to, you have these options, and they're under align items. And so flex start is default. That's what we are seeing. And you'll notice that one image on the right has more of a caption, so it sticks down lower. But let's take a look at flex end, center, stretch, baseline. Now, this is referring to each row of align items. Okay, so it's align items. It's over here. Flex start. That's standard. Flex end. Notice the three figures all drop down so the bottom of the text of all of them line up. But then you have the space on top, and so it still looks kind of ugly. So you might want to just try center. And so they're sort of centered now. So you have a little bit of adjustment. And then uh, what else do we have? We have uh, stretch. You might want to do stretch. This would be good if you have a background color. So let's just go ahead and add a background color to our figure. Okay, now this is ugly. I don't recommend you use these colors the way I did. But I wanted to show as a demonstration. I added a background color to the gallery. 
and then I added a background color to the figure. The figure has a gray background. The gallery has a blue, really ugly blue. So we added a little red and a little green. Let's try it a different way. Oh, that's not any better. <laughs> okay, I better stop while I don't get any worse. All right, so anyway, so that's the Align Items Center. Okay, let's do Stretch so you can see what goes on. On Stretch now, they're all the same height. And our background colors just go to where they need to go. This is probably one of your best options for using Align Items in my opinion and that's a line items there's one other one called baseline and uh it baseline is just the baseline of your text um and so let's just see what it looks like so you can see it in action type baseline notice what happened it tries to line up the text a little bit it no longer stretches the background color so that's what baseline looks like doesn't really change that much for now let's just do line items of stretch i kind of like that there's one last one, which is align content. Okay, so when there's extra space from top to bottom, this is only really going to work if you have set the, the height of an element, I believe. Uh, but I want you to see there's yet another one here called align content. If you, want, if you have a background color on your image gallery and you want everything to appear at the top, you would use flex stop, start. If you want everything to be at the bottom, you use flex end and it adds the remaining space at the top. Center adds the same amount of space on the top as on the bottom. Stretch is going to stretch all of your rows to make them all match. And then space between, space around works the way it did um, on the other one horizontally, but it does it vertically now. Okay, so I don't usually touch aligned content. You may find a use for it. So whenever you're thinking about aligning stuff and you're going to use the Flexbox, just Google Flexbox, go to the complete guide, gives you all the information you could want. Now, I've pretty much run out of time. So on my next video, I'm going to just talk briefly about some of the things you have available for the children items. But then I'm going to focus mostly on styles like uh, rounded corners, drop shadows, and other kinds of things you may want to play around with for that. So stay tuned for that video. Thank you.